at Senti Coagulant Part 2 and hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shanaz Malay. This is the coagulation cascade uh, which is the enzymatic process in which the one factor is activated another one in the particular fixed sequence. So it is called coagulation cascade. There are three types of the pathway, intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway and common pathway. Intrinsic pathway is called intrinsic because uh, injury is from inside of the blood vessel and endothelial damage causes blood contact in the collagen and damaged blood lamina, a basal lamina and activate platelet and release platelet derived factor which activate the intrinsic pathway. So it activate uh, factor 12 to 12 activating factor. 12 activating factor is activate 9, uh, 11, uh, factor 11 and factor 11 activating factor activate factor 9. Now this factor 9 activating factor is act on the factor 10. And now extrinsic pathway is called extrinsic because the injury is from the outside of the blood vessel. Secondary to trauma, tissue factor is releases in the blood vessel and this tissue factor is activate the extrinsic pathway and it uh, act on the factor 7 and it activate factor 7. Now this factor 7 is act, act on the factor 10. After from this sequence the common pathway is activated. So both extrinsic and intrinsic pathway is activating factor 10. So factor 10A is activated and this act on the prothrombin and prothrombin convert into thrombin and now thrombin is act on the fibrinogen and fibrinogen act, act on the uh, fibrinogen convert into fibrin and it is the insoluble fibrin clot. Uh, anticoagulant effect is achieved by inhibiting uh, directly as well as indirectly action on the thrombin or factor 10A. Now classification of anticoagulant drug. So there are two types of the anticoagulant, parental anticoagulant and oral anticoagulant. So first group is the parental anticoagulant in which uh, they are indirectly thrombin inhibitor and directly thrombin inhibitor. So first is the indirectly thrombin, uh, thrombin inhibitors are heparin, unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight heparin. So drugs are low molecular weight heparin, enoxaparin, deltiparin, ardiparin and reviparin when synthetic heparin derivatives are fondaparinux and directly thrombin inhibitors are herudin based thrombin inhibitor like lepirudin, bivalirudin, desirudin and ergotrobin. Now next group is the oral anticoagulant which are again directly thrombin inhibitor are debigatron and Direct factor 10 inhibitor are rivaroxaban and apexaban. Second is the cumarin derivative, which are warfarin, acinocumerol, and dicumerol. Now, low molecular weight heparin uh, drugs are enoxaparin, reviparin, deltiparin, and atriparin. It obtained from standard heparin by fractionation. After fractionation of the standard heparin, we get low molecular weight heparin. So, what is the mechanism of action? So, first of all, drug bind with the antithrombin and this complex will act on the factor 10A and inhibit factor 10A. So, what are the advantages of low molecular weight heparin over um, unvaccinated heparin? So, it can be better absorbed subcutaneously, longer half-life 4 to 6 hours, so, it can be used uh, daily, once a day and APTT monitoring is not required and lesser risk of osteoporosis, bleeding and thrombocytopenia and it is uh, eliminated by kidney, so not used in the renal failure patient. So, this is the mechanism of action. So, this is uh, uh, pentasaccharide of the low molecular weight heparin and uh, it binds with the antithrombin and this complex 
low molecular weight heparin thrombin uh, anti thrombin complex will bind to the factor 10 and it inhibit the factor 10 and uh, it act as a anticoagulant drug so this is the mechanism again it is uh, bind with the anti thrombin 3 and it act on the thrombin and take factor 10a now next group is the fonda perinux it is also synthetic parental anticoagulant and bind with antithrombin and selectively inactivate factor 10a without any effect on the thrombin so ultimately it inhibit factor 10a and thrombin so uh, fundaparinux is administered subcutaneously and uh, useful in pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis. It has long half-life uh, approximately 17 hours and good cutaneous subcutaneous bioavailability. Incidence of the thrombocytopenia and osteoporosis is lower and does not require routine uh, laboratory investigation and uh, it is effect uh, are uh, not reversible by protamine sulfate and should not be administered in renal failure patient. So action of the fondaparinux is first it uh, bind with the antithrombin 3 and then it bind uh, it uh, block the factor 10a. So parental anticoagulant uh, should be used as a prophylaxis in treatment of thromboembolic disease like rapid onset of action, lower dose required for the prophylaxis and warfarin is started concurrently to, because the action of the warfarin is delayed and uh, at that time uh, prophylactic uh, aparin or uh, low molecular weight heparin can and it should be given at least for four to five days. Acute coronary syndrome, unstable angina, deep vein thrombosis, angioplasty, cardio, pulmonary bypass, and prevention of post-operative thrombosis. All these conditions, uh, parental anticoagulant should be start. Fondaparinux is approved for the thrombo. Uh, prophylaxis in patient undergoing knee and hip replacement surgery or initial therapy for the pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis. Now, direct thrombin inhibitors are uh, like uh, uh, lepirudine, desirudine, bivalirudine and ergotamine. These are uh, directly thrombin inhibitor and it binds with the thrombin and inhibit this thrombin. Lepirudine is derived from the leech protein heridine. They uh, does not bind with the antithrombin 3. They bind directly to the thrombin and inactivate thrombin. Now this is the action. Uh, Lepirudine, bivalirudine and ergotamine act on the thrombin directly. Lepirudine uh, is recombinant preparation of heridine highly effective because it inhibit free and bound thrombin irreversibly on repeated administration antibody against the lepirudine and thrombin complex and prolong anticoagulant effect and chances of anaphylaxis can occur it is approved in patient with heparin induced thrombocytopenia and parentally given renal early excreted so it is uh, given in the hepatic insufficient patient and its action can be reversed by cannot be reversed by protamine sulfate now arga choben and bivalirudine it is synthetic a reversible direct thrombin inhibitor with rapid onset of action they are short acting administer intravenous infusion they used as anticoagulant in patient who are at risk of heat, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So this drug can be given in this condition. Adverse effect of bleeding, ergotamin effect on international normalized ratio. It is secreted in bile and can be used in patient with renal failure. Now therapeutic use of anticoagulants. So the main aim of anticoagulant therapy is to prevent formation of intravascular thrombus formation or prevent further extension of already formed clot. So it does not break the clot uh, or thrombus 
once it is formed it is uh, used for the prophylactic treatment for to prevent formation of the intravascular thrombus or clot so in initial phase it should be start with a low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin and continued for the at least 4 to 5 days then maintenance therapy with the oral anticoagulant like warfarin but warfarin should be start with the low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin because the action onset of action of warfarin is delayed so it should be started simultaneously with the heparin and heparin does not cross the blood brain barrier and placental barrier so it is the choice of uh, it is the drug of choice in the pregnancy now deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism venous thrombi are mainly formed in the fibrin network with a long tail that can easily detach and result in embolization of the pulmonary arteries so anticoagulant are used for the treatment and prevention of a thromboembolism for the treatment of venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism heparin and low molecular weight heparin is administered warfarin is also started simultaneously with the heparin and low molecular weight heparin because uh, action of heparin and low molecular weight heparin is uh, within uh, rapid action and uh, it should be continued for 4 to 5 days till the effect of warfarin is obtained low dose of the heparin therapy is administered subcutaneously for the prevention of deep vein thrombosis and thromboembolism in the patient undergoes major surgeries for requirement of prolonged immobilization low molecular weight heparin and fondaparinux are also effective in laboratory uh, monitoring is usually not required for the low dose of the heparin regimen next is the myocardial infarction uh, anticoagulant like heparin and low molecular weight heparin and fondaparinux are used in patient with a high risk of embolism uh, atrial fibrillation and the prevention of mural thrombus anticoagulant help to prevent recurrent attack of myocardial infarction and stroke especially when the given with combination with low dose with uh, of the aspirin heparin is used during the coronary angioplasty to prevent thrombosis and unstable angina the use of low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin or fondaparinux reduce the occurrence of the mi in these patients atrial fibrillation the patient required prolonged oral anticoagulant therapy to reduce risk of the systemic uh, embolization and stroke disseminated intravascular coagulation heparin may useful in selected cases to decrease the consumption of the clotting factor other uses are anticoagulant are required in the prosthetic heart valve and vascular surgery to prevent the thrombo thromboembolism heparin is preferred uh, anticoagulant for the cardiopulmonary bypass surgery as it is highly effective and effect can be neutralized by the protamine sulfate low molecular weight and fondaparinux is not preferred heparin is used uh, in the hemolysis to prevent thrombosis and blood circuit thank you for watching the video